on what's been going on in the dive room. Um, you can see on my right here, I've got a couple of show cages on a couple of birds. These are the clear pair of birds that I bred, the first two that I bred this year. Um, you've seen these guys a couple of times already. So um, I tend to put the training cages on as soon as I wean them, I give them a, a day after they've been weaned. And then after that, um, I put the show cages on. Um, some people say it's too early and that you should let the birds settle down. But I sort of think if you put the show cages on, a bit of conditioned seed in the, in the pot uh, where the water's going to go and get them used to going in and out from that early age. And then it just becomes second nature to them. And these guys are already fairly relaxed. These, they've been going in and out here perhaps for 10 days, I should think. Um, so yeah, quite quite happy with those. Um, what I'm going to show you today is um, some of my weaned birds. I'm pleased to say that I've actually got a number of birds that have been weaned off now. I've got a trio that aren't far away and then another two nests that still got chicks in. So uh, let's catch up with those now. First up, this is a nest of three. Um, as you can see here, I've got a five cock bird on the right hand side. Um, he's feeding um, the chicks through the wire divider. Um, the chicks in this pen, you can see on the f there's one on the floor, a bigger bird on the on the back, looks like a yellow feathered bird. And now the one that's just joined it looks like it's a buff feathered bird. I've seen both of those guys eat out of this food, food dish on quite a regular basis. I'm fairly confident that they're ready to be winged, but that other little one that you've just seen being fed by the cockbird, uh, the cockfife, I've yet to see it feed itself. Um, it's continually going to the edge, and here it is again, it's continually going to the wide divider, and the cockbird's feeding it. So until I could, I could take the two that have started feeding themselves. I could take them away now, um, but I'm a bit reluctant to do that. I'd rather move them all to the three. So. Um, I'll hang on for a bit longer yet, and hopefully that little that little one um, will start picking up soon. There's a bit of story behind these three guys, um, because for some reason um, the fife hen uh, stopped sitting on the chicks, so um, this, they were still fairly uh, um, fairly frail. So what I was doing is, um, for about a week, I was getting them out, putting them in one of those winning cages. But you get the winning cages with the, uh, that can also be a bar, wire, wire bar. And I was putting them in that at night and taking them indoors. This was now only about six days old, seven days old. Um, so for a week, every night I was taking them in at night and then bringing them back in the bird room during the day. Um, and then she... Luckily for me, the hen didn't blink. She she fed them straight away every morning and then throughout the day. But when it came to night, she'd sit up on the perch and roost and leave them to it. And they were, they were too small and still needed brooding. So um, I, I didn't want to take the chance. But I also knew that by taking them away, there could have been a risk there of, of the hen refusing to feed them, in which case I'd have been hand rearing. But luckily for me, um, each morning she, she took, took them back straight away. So... Uh, yes, I'm pleased to say that they're okay. Um, these three are um, got the same parents as the two that I've weaned already that I just showed you at the start. Um, so that's five birds so far from um, that best cock and best hen partnership that I've got. Um, so um, with any luck, um, if I just move the camera ever so slightly. Now I wasn't going to go for another round, I was going to leave it. Um, but I've got the hen, she's sitting down in this bottom left hand corner of the cage at the moment, but on the right hand side is her nest pan, which she's built a beautiful nest and she's 
she was when the five cock bird was calling to the hen she was crying as if she wanted to be trod so she's done that for about three or four days and i am denied whether to go for another round from her bearing in mind it's the end of may but i thought well i'll just try the cock bird the border cock bird back in with her and see what happens and he trod her straight away um, and that's happened probably half a dozen times now So these three chicks are also from that best cockbird that I've got. So um, they're growing well. The hen is a is a first year that she's been uh, she's a first year hen. Sorry, so it's really good that she's been as dedicated as she has, and she's she's raised these three for me. So that's good news. So there's a close up view of that nest that we just saw the hen feeding. Um, it looks like there's a clear one, clear bird, and two darker birds whether they're variegated or three parts dark i don't know the yellow bird does seem to have a little bit of dark feathering on the back of his neck so it might actually just be a ticked bird so um that'd be interesting and then and the, the chick on the left this is being raised by um a bird that is a 2021 20, bird she's the one that raised the, the two fives uh, sorry the two borders that i showed you at the start um, the, um a few years ago i bought two really nice clear yellow hens and I couldn't get them to to breed at all it was really frustrating um, and then I bought in that new cock bird that I've shown you earlier that's been I've shown you on a few occasions and he trod the two clear hens so I've got five youngsters from one of the clear hens and at the moment I've got one youngster from the other clear hen and I don't know if you remember that first round from the Sorry, this is confusing. That first round from that other clear hen, two chicks died of black spot, which I understand is something that the hen passes on to the chicks. She's got bad bacteria in her gut. So I didn't want to take the chance with this one. So I took it away. And um, there were three for legs. Unfortunately, only one hatched, and that's this one. This is another clear hen. Uh, sorry, another clear. Um, so it's starting to give me enough birds or a nice number of birds to build a clear line from. So that's what I'm hoping to do. Um, and I've got different hens that I can use in that as well. So I just thought I'd hover here for a minute because I was hoping that she might, the hen on the left might feed her youngsters, but we're getting another view now of the hen on the on the right feeding these little ones. So here's that single chick, just having a quick look while mum's off the nest. Um, another clear, um, hatched on the 18th of May, so it's 11 days old now. So, so far so good anyway. I'm going to get out of the way because she wants to come back on. Um, unfortunately the blue hen um, hasn't produced anything for me this year again. So I think I'm going to have to accept that she's not going to do it for me now. So. Um, I've got the white variegated hen, you can just see the top of her head here. This is her third attempt, another nest of three chicks. Um, I'm not sure whether anything's going to come of this because I've, I've never seen them tread. So um, I'm hoping that there might be something in it, but I've never seen them tread. But the same thing can be said for this hen in this nest. I've yet to see these two tread. And yet they've produced four really nice youngsters and she's now sitting on another four eggs um, that were set on the 24th, no, the, sorry, the 26th of May, so due date 10th of June. Um, this will be her second round. So she's, um, I won't let her have a third round because I don't want to be setting eggs in June if I can help it. Um, but yeah, so um, there's her partner, there's a pot bird. Nice yellow variegated cut bird. I don't know if that's in focus, I'm sorry. And, uh, and there's the hen. I mentioned the other birds that have been weaned. Um, here are these guys. They might be a bit flighty because they've not seen the camera this place before, so please bear with me. Um, here we go. So there's four youngsters in here. 
Um, these were the second lot to be weaned. A nice variety of birds, all looking nice and healthy, all eating well. Um, they're actually quite good at going in and out the show cage at the moment as well, so that's good going. So there's four there. There are chicks from Albert. You all remember Albert, my first ever bred border canary. Um, and she was paired with the best cock bird, so it's another four from, for him. Now, uh, if I drop down, I've got another four. So these these were weaned um, about a week ago. So I'll give them another few days and then I'll start putting them into their individual cages. Uh, so they're still getting a whole egg food drawer. Well, both those and the other ones are both getting an egg food drawer full of soft food every day um, while, they're still, while they're still little. And then the other bird that's been weaned is this one. She's a single, and she was an only chick in the nest. Um, she doesn't want to sit on the perch. I don't quite know why, but she's not sitting on the perch. She seems to be quite a big bird. Um, her feet were, were clogged up <coughs> with, excuse me, uh, with some um, debris from the nest when I moved her. And when I went to so spend a while um, cleaning her feet, and I just stood her in a bath for a half an hour um, when it was quite warm outside and then I, I put her in here but she's still even so I don't know whether her feet are sore after me cleaning them but she just doesn't want to perch so um, what I might try and do with her at some point is put her in with another bird um, and just see if having another bird and getting that bird on the perch will make her do it so but we'll have to wait and see but I said to you that they like going in and out of the show cage so let's just stick a show cage on that top now and then uh, and see how we get on. First one in. It's been quite amusing actually because um, all four have been in at various times. As soon as one goes in, the others follow, and it's good to see and uh, putting the head through the little little hole um, to get to the condition seed in the pot. So um, I just leave. Uh, there seems to be different opinions on this. Some folks say if the bird puts his head through the, the pot hole to get a condition seed, if it's thirsty, it'll find water and put his head through to find the water, but I like the bird to be comfortable with putting his head through and not worrying about it. So I always start off with a bit of condition seed in there. Um, it's not, it's worked quite well with the other birds that I've done uh, this way. So they'll have a condition seed in there. And again, once they go into the um, single cages and they're, when they're split off, um, then I'll, um, I'll start putting water in. But I'll only, I'll only do this show cage training with them up until the mulch. As soon as they start molting, um, I'll stop doing it then and I'll just leave them to get on with the mulch. Um, and then once they've all molted out, um, that's when I'll start um, putting the show cages on again and they can have another round of training. So, so yeah, so that's, that's seeing some of those birds going in. I just realised I filmed all that last segment and I'd only filmed half of the showcase, so apologies for that. Um, but it's a good way of getting the birds used to going in and out anyway. So um, I showed you the, the two clears earlier in the video and they're used to doing it now. So it's um, I think it's quite a good idea. Well, that's it for this week, folks. A much shorter video uh, this week. Um, I don't want to have too much filming in the, in the bedroom when the and there's uh, nesting going on. So um, just wanted to give you a little update as to where we are and where, everything. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, and now we'll have a quick update on the bearded weedlings. So here you can see my bearded weedling apiary. Um, it's a rather sad morning. 
frustrating news this week. Um, I've lost the hand. Um, and I don't mean lost her when she's died, I mean she's got out. Um, and I, I just can't believe it. I've, I've been all around the Avery since and I cannot find a hole anywhere that she could possibly have got out. There obviously must be one, um, otherwise she wouldn't have escaped. But how do I know that she's escaped? Well, just to the left of where I'm standing now um, is our allotment area of our garden. And we've got some spelling apple trees that we're training. And I was stood indoors on uh, Tuesday morning, I think it was, it might be Wednesday. Um, and I saw a reedling uh, jumping around in the branches and picking off green fly. And at first I was like, oh my God, look, there's a great, there's a reedling in the garden. And then I thought, well, hang on a minute, where I live, there's no way there should be any reedlings here. But we have got some big reed beds not far from us on the side on the um, Solway estuary, but if a bird, if there's reedlings there, they're going to be there, not in a suburban garden. Anyway, I went out and had a look in the aviary and there was no hen. So I went down the garden to have a look and saw her a bit closer and she's got the blue ring on. So she's definitely my hen. Um, so I posted a message on Facebook group on the Bearded Reading, on the Bearded Reading Facebook groups. And a few folks got in touch with me with different ideas and some of those were hang a cage on the front of the aviary with some mealworms in and maybe she'll come back. You know, maybe she'll come back, she'll be looking for the mealworms. So I did that. Um, I saw her later that day. Um, she didn't come near the aviary. And unfortunately she hasn't been near the aviary since and I haven't seen her. So the cockbird, I don't know if you can see, is just he's diving in and out with the, with the maple. The cockbird um, took on the sitting duties on the nest, in the nest of four eggs. And for the first 24, 36 hours, he sat pretty tight on those eggs. Did a reasonable job actually, because he hatched one. Um, but unfortunately, he got bored because he was Obviously, the hen wasn't there. He spent ages. He's clinging on the wire at this end um, where we could see her and he was shouting for her. I was hoping that by him calling it would bring her back, but it made no difference. And after two days, he walked off the nest. Um, so I've been in there this morning to have a look, and there was one dead baby and three eggs that are full. So, yeah, so I've lost, I've lost my hand. I don't know if you can see the cockbird jumping in and out of some of these shots, but I've lost my hen. So I'm going to have to be looking to get a hen at some point this year, keeping company. So, um, but yeah, so a bit of a sad update on the readings. But. Yeah, so as you can imagine, I'm gutted that that hen's flown away. So, but there we are. That's bird keeping, isn't it? It's, uh, it's one of those things. I don't know how she's got out, but hey ho. Let's try and find another reading hen somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, so thanks ever so much for watching. I uh, really appreciate everybody that comes and watches the channel every week. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please like and subscribe. Um, I've got 867 subscribers, so um, it's really good that I've got I'm really desperate to make a thousand as soon as I can. So go on, do us a favour. If you've watched the video to the end, do us a favour. Click that subscribe button, give me a like, hit the bell so that you'll get notified of any future videos that come out. And in the meantime, I hope your breeding seasons are all going well. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon on the Border Corner. <laughs>